We're here with Jeff Birch and Paul McArdle of Birch Family Wines, and we're talking about our sparkling range today. Jeff, what do you got to say? Well, I think uh, Madfish Vera's Cuvée sparkling for me is, is a very important wine because it's named after Vera, who was our cellar door manager for many years in Denmark, who loves champagne and sparkling wine. And she was the driving force to force us to uh, get into production of this. So it's always got a soft spot for me, this wine. And I mean, this wine is all from the Great Southern. In fact, a single vineyard in the Great Southern, one of, one of the uh, highest vineyards. So we tend to get very cool climate fruit, which is really what we're after. It's predominantly um, two-thirds Chardonnay and one-third Pinot Noir uh, from very cool sites. And uh, it's made in our facility, so it's uh, made in our facility in Market River where we do everything in-house. So the base wine is made there, the terraging, um, the riddling, um, everything is done in-house in so we can control the quality of the wine we put under our Madfish label. And importantly, and, and probably quite unusually, it's, it's made in method traditional way, also method champenois. So it's actually fermented in this bottle, it's not transferred to tank, and therefore is, is the most premium way of making sparkling wine and we leave this wine on its leaves for 18 months which is the standard for non-vintage champagnes um, and helps provide uh, integration and, and some complexity. It's a very dry wine, we like dry styles so uh, the uh, sugar levels on this wine um, are quite low, uh, around 8 grams which is a relatively low um, addition rate. So uh, it's a brute style. And at the, as Jeff said, I mean, it's at the bottom end of the brute style. So you can go up to 15 grams. And because it's, it's new world, and even though it comes from a cool climate, you do tend to get a little bit more um, weight of fruit. And so we think it's important that it doesn't need much sugar um, to balance the acidity. And again, we try to keep the alcohol low. I mean, all these wines sit around about 12.5% alcohol, which is where we want them. Vera would have been very proud to be drinking this wine. It's pretty fresh. Lots of tangy fruit and lovely complexity and there's just this hint of um, development which is, which is what we want to see from that 18 months on Lees. It just softens it off and there's a little bit of creaminess creeping in on the palate which is very, very nice. Attractive. All right. All right. Have a look at the, the jeté. Well, I think we should look at the jeté. Jeté, of course, a wonderful name. You know, where do we come from? Jeté. Where did that name come from? My brother, and uh, brother's a very talented individual. And in another life, he was a principal dancer with the Australian Ballet. And so when I asked him to uh, come up with a name, jeté uh, was the invention, which is a great ballet term for leap. And this was a big leap forward for us. With our, with our method traditional program. And down the track we've got a Grand Jeté, which is obviously a giant leap, um, and that'll be the vintage. So it's uh, four years on in bottle, still still in a cool cellar, while we uh, wait for it to get some more complexity. So that's that we'll release that down the track. But we've got two Jetés here, we've got the white and, and the red. And again, they're coming from our Mount Barrow vineyard, down in, near the Prongrups on the Mount Barker border. An elevated site, very cold, mines have to struggle. Um, so we're looking for that fine acidity, which is what's really required when you're, you're making Method Traditional. And I think you see that with this wine, Amir. Mean, there is another step up in terms of tightness and in complexity. Uh, the acidity in this, to me, is, is more obvious, and it's what we want to see as well. Um, but I also think there's a dimension of complexity here that, we, that is just, as I say, one step up from, from Vera's and provides a little bit more length of palate as well. You notice that that, that intensity of flavour and that um, lingering aftertaste comes through with the, this, this, this wine. Um, of course the yields are much lower on this because not only are the fruit um, yields on the, on the vineyards are very low, but in the press you take a much finer cut. When I say a finer cut, you take a lot less litres per tonne um, because you only want the purest of juice for uh, the 
the base wine for, to go into Method Traditionnel. And this is just marginally, um, or has marginally more Chardonnay than the Vieras, it's about uh, 78%. So it's a little bit more, and that to me shows a little bit more tightness on the palate, and gives a little bit more focus and austerity. That's a nice drink. Yeah. Um, this was, uh, we're very proud to say that when the Queen visited Perth, um, this was the uh, sparkling that they served to the Queen at the government house. And uh, so if it's good enough for the Queen, I'm sure it's good enough for you. <laughs> Right, should we have a look at the rosé? Yep. I do like rosé. It's a, a bit of a fashion statement, but I do like the red. And uh, lovely salmon colour. 100% um, Pinot Noir. Again, from our vineyard down in Mount Barrow. So it's the same vineyard, but it's uh, just uh, uh, Pinot Noir. And you can see that on the nose, uh, some, the, the red berry complexity is there. A little bit more tannin, um, a little fuller, a little richer. And I think what, I mean, to, to me, rosé is much more about um, fullness and generosity. It's a style that, that you'd want to drink um, at a different time than when you would drink the, the brut or the, the white. I mean, it has this doesn't have quite the complexity, but certainly has a lot more sort of, as I say, generosity and opulence, and makes it very attractive drinking. Yes, this is a this is a wine that you can drink with red meats if you wish to, um, you know, over lunch on a on a hot day. Um, and I don't necessarily think you can you can't drink champagne. You can drink champagne and, and sparkling wines at uh, all kinds of uh, different occasions, and it goes really well. It's a hot day, nice chilled rosé, and so like meat or fish, beautiful. And again, both these are made method champenois or method traditionnel as we spoke about with the Vera's. So uh, extra care is taken to make sure that they're uh, of the, the best quality. There's quite a little, lot of work that's done when we talk about method traditionnel. You make a base wine, you've then got to put it in a bottle, you've got to put the yeast, you've got to put the sugar in, you put a beer cap on it, you know, you then leave it. 18 months minimum in a cool cellar um, where that yeast works away with the sugar and creates the bubbles. Then you've got to riddle it to get all those dead yeast cells down to the neck of the, of the bottle. Then you've got to neck freeze it and you've got to pop the top off. A slug of ice with the dead yeast cells will pop out. Um, then you have the last opportunity where the winemaker can adjust the um, house style or the sweetness level with a liqueur addition, and then you can um, uh, cork it and wire it, or musillette as they call it. Um, it's still too cold to package, so you've got to take it off the line and then wait a few days and put it back on for the hoods and the labels. So there's a lot of um, batch making. It's, it's, a, it's a method that's made by hand, um, so it's always going to cost a bit more, but you get much higher quality because you've got that development in the bottle which is a huge difference than the other methods which are much cheaper, which are tank fermented, which essentially are just carbonated um, juices. Yeah. And you certainly don't get the complexity with those wines that you get with a wine that's been left on, on lees because that breakdown of dead yeast cells that they call autolysis gives you that sort of bready, nutty character and just adds complexity. Otherwise you tend to have one dimensional wines which I mean is, is a product of a lot of new world um, winemaking and in fact old world winemaking as well where they as Jeff said, they just they're just made in tanks, and they don't have that added complexity of uh, of sitting on their, their yeast cells or dead yeast cells. So you can jeté, 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 off the stage and into the future. <laughs>